Hello everyone, Oli here and welcome to my review of <laughs> The Keys of Marinus The fifth story of the first season of Classic Doctor Who starring William Hartnell as the first Doctor This is the first ever six part story and is written by Terry Nation And we're halfway through the first season you guys, yay! Before I get started, I want to give a special shout out to fellow Doctor Who YouTuber Nicholas Payne. He recently subscribed to my channel and leaves, gave some very nice comments and he also does very nice reviews and so go check him out. Okay, so the plot of the story is as follows. On a remote island surrounded by a sea of glass oh pardon me. In a remote island of glass surrounded by a sea of acid, there is a machine that can remove evil from the minds of the entire population, the conscious of Marinus. Fearful of its immense power falling into the wrong hands, its sole garden has scattered the machine's operating keys through across the planet. The TARDIS crew arrived to find the island under attack by the evil Vord. Marinus's last line of defense and its only hope is the conscious machine. The doctor and his companions must undertake a deadly quest to recover the keys of Marinus. Ooh. So what I thought of this story? Outstanding. Just outstanding. In my opinion, this is the first ever five star Doctor Who story. Initially, going head into this story, I thought it was going to be a bit rubbish. And one of my friends told me that he actually fell asleep watching The Keys of Marinus. And when I, and when I eventually watched it and I told him about it, he was actually quite surprised that I, actually, that I liked it. He was like, <laughs> What? You liked it? <laughs> and I consider this to be a favorite. There are a lot of aspects of this story I really enjoyed. The pacing was well done. The episodes went by quite quickly. When you enjoy the episode more, then the pace in the then the episodes tend to go by quickly. But it did fall flat in around episode three. But thank God it actually picked up from there. The build up of the story was actually gradual, and I, I like that, and it worked really well. And it, obviously, this is the quest episode, and. I loved how it's a quest episode and it allowed the companions to travel to different locations of the story. So if we think one episode we're in like in the snow planet and then the next episode, the previous episode we're in some sort of Roman-esque palace or something like that. And they were able to travel around using the travel dial because I think the void or someone did something to the TARDIS and they weren't able to enter. <coughs> and I thought that was a very clever concept. And they, they, did, they also did like a travel story in the previous story, a travel plot in the previous story, Marco Polo, but Marinus did it a lot better in my opinion. And and he also liked how the story was unpredictable. I mean, you didn't really know what was going to happen in the story. The set design was really good, and I love the visual at the start of episode one, where we get a long look at the acid sea and the glass surrounding, and then we see the TARDIS materialize on the beach, and that. Dun, 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 the suspense of music. I actually like that. <coughs> uh, what was I? The main cast were wonderful, as always, to, and to me, the companions, Ian and Barbara, and to some extent Susan, before she got kidnapped in episode 5, they stood out to me, and this was because William Hartnell went on holiday for episodes 3 and 4, so Ian, Barbara, and Susan pretty much had to like carry the story on their backs, and I thought that. And it did extremely well, especially Ian, because as I mentioned in my review of the Daleks, he was doing more of the hands-on stuff because William Hartnell couldn't do as much because of his health conditions. And this and the whole action companion, as I mentioned before, it suits Ian very well. Barbara, she does quite well in the story as well. When she smashed the brains of Morphin in episode two, I think they were the ones that are causing the whole issues in episode 2 but in this story she does kind of shift towards the damsel in distress territory where she almost gets raped by that guy named Vassal that was actually quite scary I think the rape I think that's what happened in episode 4 I think yeah and for Doctor Who that scene was actually quite scary well done but to be honest I thought it was a bit unnecessary and it didn't really suit Barbara's character at all I mean she's this confident woman I didn't think she needed to have this trauma of being attacked by this big man it would have been slightly better if he actually tried to kill her yes but raping her but i think that's a bit too dark even for doctor who especially around that time it was a show for the family to watch <coughs> the whole quest plot is halted a bit in episode 5 
and it transitions from the cold quest thing to turning the keys of Marinus into a courtroom drama. I think at that point, I think the doctor, I think he found two keys already in his absence. And I think they needed to find one more key and then Ian was knocked out and he was accused of killing someone. And and that courtroom scene, that courtroom plot, that was an end I fell deeper in love with this episode because I like courtroom dramas, especially Law and Order, the special victims one, and I limit to some extent. Suits, I know it's I've heard of it but I'm, I'm gonna get into it one day. I know it's finished now, but hey I don't have to do it for new episodes. <laughs> And this is where the Doctor makes his grand return after being missing for two episodes. And I love how he returned the agreement with Ian's statements of the laws of Mariners being a mockery and the Doctor was like, You know my boy, I agree with you. <laughs> and obviously Ian was exonerated in around episode 6 and then the last few minutes of episode 6 where the Doctor and his companions return to the Marinus machine room, the conscious machine, where I think one of the females, I think her name was Sabbath, was captured. I think Vassal, was he captured as well? No, 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 Vassal, I mean, what's it again? Altos, yeah. I think, was he captured as well? I can't remember some parts, but yeah. Yeah, I think they were captured and then the doctor pretty much had to like Stop the vault for once and for even though they were missing for like most of the story. Yeah, and I think the vault took over when they killed or killed the guardian in episode one. Speaking of the vaults, yes, the elf was rather rubbish, but it did give off a creepy vibe, and that's something Classic Who does in general. What they made the men in suits bits in Classic Doctor Who, <coughs> they, they did they did a very good job making them scary. Hell, they even made bubble wrap scary in the Arkham space. Before they actually had the proper killer bubble wrap in Kablam in season 11. <laughs> Series 11, I mean. Yeah. The supporting cast are good as well, but as I mentioned before, Altus and Sabatha, they were stood out. They were the ones that were traveling with Ian and Barbara and Susan and the Doctor when they were finding the keys of Marinus. Before the Doctor went off to find two other keys, I think. Yeah, they did a good job. But to be honest, I actually found the outfit quite funny because. <coughs> they are, I think they were, they were pretty much doing the same thing throughout the whole episode and even when they were in that cold, that cold place <laughs> they were pretty much wearing, exposing their skin, especially out of, the guy was pretty much walking around in his underwear <laughs> in that cold environment, I mean hell, even what I'm wearing right now, I actually feel cold I don't know what he must have felt like <laughs> but they did cover up though, so yeah, that's kind of good the only criticism I have, other than the ones I briefly mentioned before is that was the resolution of the cliffhanger for episode 1 when Ian found Barbara's travel down with blood on it only to find that a few minutes later she's perfectly fine and the blood was from her, was actually her blood but it was because when she, was, she scratched herself trying to remove the travel down I mean like I was thinking to myself Barbara must have scratched herself really deep if to be some blood on it that caused Ian to worry but nonetheless all the negatives aside doesn't take away the fact that I consider this to be one of my favorite Hartnell serials and one of the best of the first season. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give The Keys of Marinus a perfect 10. <laughs> All six parts of the story were made very well of and only a handful of Doctor Who six parts to do this. For instance, I'll name those another time, I can't remember. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll get back to those later. <laughs> Okay, so my next review is The Aztecs, one of the highly regarded Hartnell stories. Thankfully, all episodes for that story exist, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and drop a like and give, give me feedback on what I can do better and tell me what you thought of the Keys of Marinus. So, until next time, see you around.